Hello, welcome to my happy place. Today what I'm going to do uh, is start a series for you. At least that's my intention. So hopefully that will be able to be accomplished. And what the series will be is working with spin effects. And I will start with number one and work all the way up to number 16. So I can show you one or two ways of using them. Um, I can't show you all the ways of using them because it's just too varied. There are so many different ways to use these spin effects rulers or templates, I'm sorry, as there are the imagination. So we're just going to go ahead and start with the basics. I'll show you the basics. I'm going to show you each set, the sizes in each set, and then we're going to go ahead and make a stitch out of each set. So what I've got here, since we're going to start at number one, is the spin effects one template which comes in a three and a half, five and a half, seven and a half, which is the one I'm going to use today, nine and a half, and eleven and a half inch size. Let me give you a little background on sizing with the spin effects. When a spin effects tells you it is, for example, in this uh, size, seven and a half inches, what you're going to do is you're going to notice that it's four and a quarter inches from tip to tip. And we need to take off a half an inch, a quarter of an inch here, a quarter of an inch here, to make, uh, make the size that we need because we have a quarter of an inch on our foot going on this inside rotation. So what we end up with is we end up with three and three quarters. If you multiply three and three quarters by two, you come up with seven and a half. So the individual template, or the one rotation on the template, is half of what the finished size is up here. So this is going to be three and three quarters from top to bottom. When we have two of them, which I'm going to show you how we're going to do that, they will be seven and a half inches wide. And this is universal among all spin effects. Now there's something a little interesting about the spin effects one that I want to point out to you. First is the lines on it. We have a center line going from the top to the bottom. And right here we have a, a tack, a place for a tack in here. So we can do this template with a tack in there making the overall size larger. I'm not sure we're going to do that. Okay, uh, the spin effects that need a tack come with two tacks in the package. Oops, sorry about that. They come with stable tape and they come with the package itself which gives us a lot of information. The name of the template, Spin Effects 1, this particular set has five templates. As I already showed you, three and a half, five and a half, seven and a half, nine and a half, eleven and a half. Here is a simple eight point um, design motif stitched out, and here are pictures of them. I use a low shank template. Um, my machine is a vintage Singer 301, and it does call for low shank templates. And then when we open the instructions, it again says the sizes 
it adds the mini. We actually do have a mini uh, one and a half inch and two and a half inch in the Spin Effects one. It will have pictures of different types of rotations, how many t rotations there are, um, and it will give you some additional information in here and how the design will look as it's stitched out. On the back are some alternatives, and here's a little bit about Leonie West, who is the designer of the templates. Uh, she invented this, and um, we're just having fun with it now. So I'm going to go ahead and take all this away. And again, I'm not going to use the tack on this particular uh, design that I'm making. As I like to do before I start any project, and this is a really good habit to get into, we want to get you here so you can see real well. What we want to do is we want to test our foot height. You know, even um, the same fabric, the same batting from piece to piece can vary just a little bit, meaning that your foot would need to be adjusted just a tad as well. So here we go. There we go. What I'm looking for is ease of movement. My glider is helping me along with that. I'm going to look at the tension. I want to see that my top thread is not coming through the back of the project. And my bobbin thread is not coming up at the top, on the top. And as you can see here, this looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any bobbin thread here. And on this side, I'm not seeing any, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing a top thread here and I'm not seeing any bobbin thread on the top. So we are good to go. I have drawn on here a, a 16 reference lines. So we're going to start with eight reference line. I'm going to go ahead and put the template down here. Oh, word to the wise. When you're putting your template in and out, make sure that your needle is up because it will etch a line into that template if you don't have it raised all the way. I speak from experience. So here we go. Sometimes it causes me some angst with the one that I did it with because it's so close to the center um, line that I sometimes kind of mistake one for the other and that's never good. I'm going to hold the template towards me. I want you to see the whole stitch out. I brought my bobbin thread to the top. I'm going to hold those threads back. And the reason I do that is so that I keep the back of my project looking as good as the front of my project and don't end up with any thread nests under there. I like to take nice and slow to start. Just move around. Because this has a curve to it, I'm going to use a shorter stitch length than I usually use on straight lines. I'm not trying to win a race. I'm taking my time. And I end up right where I started. I put my needle down. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to work opposite. So I started here. I'm going to go to the opposite side next. There is a reason that we do this. The reason being is that it draws our fabric in more evenly. Every time we stitch, we put a stitch in here, it draws our fabric a little bit. 
and this just draws it smoother and more evenly and it just looks better in the end. So here we go. This is rotation number two. Nice and steady. If you're just learning, don't worry about that stitch length. That's going to come with time and practice. Trust me, mine didn't look all that pretty in the beginning. <laughs> I don't know anyone who did. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my, the way that it's set, I've got my horizontal. I'm going to come and turn my vertical and take and do that. The key to making good stitches is being able to regulate your foot, your eye-hand coordination. Some instructors will tell you, set your um, speed on your sewing machine and hit the pedal to the metal. And that's fine if that's the way you wish to do it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not my preference. And the reason I say that is because there are some templates you're going to want to slow down on. And there's others that you can speed up on. And I think it's important to be able to control that speed. Now, my machine, I have no way of controlling the speed other than my foot. So whether I like it or not, that's what I have to work with. And I pretty much really like it. Actually, I do have more modern machines that I do really work on. I do not use the speed control on either of them. Okay, so now what you'll see here, and I'm going to just take this out for a second, but I'm not going to take my needle out. I'm going to leave my needle in and what we've got here is four rotations. It's cute, isn't it? It looks nice. We are going to add another four rotations and I'm just going to put a little there, turn over there so it's easier to get to. I'm going to keep the same side in the center. We don't want to be switching these back and forth. Now with this particular template, it's not that big a deal because the overall design of the template is pretty, pretty symmetrical. But we've got other templates that are not symmetrical. And what's going to happen if we flip them back and forth? They're not going to look the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the center. I'm going to clip these threads off. Normally, I would bury those threads, but I can clip those off because we're going to stitch over and over and over this, and that's going to lock those threads in. They will not go anywhere. So when we're done, we can rest assured that they are locked in there. So this is our fifth rotation. And we're going to, again, turn it to the opposite side. It's really easy to do when you're dealing with small blocks. When we work with larger blocks, what we want to do is we want to learn to rotate the template instead of the block. And that comes with time and practice as well. And this is rotation number six. OK, 
Okay, back to the center, and here's rotation number seven. There we go. We're going to do one more. And then we're going to show you what it looks like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make eight additional rotations. The difference being is I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me make them because that's about as much fun as watching paint dry, right? <laughs> I'm going to show you the beginning and I'll show you the end, but I won't bore you with all of them. Here we go. This is our eighth rotation. I think this makes a beautiful daisy. It looks like a daisy to me with some beautiful secondary design right in the center. And here we go. Nice and steady. And we are back in the center. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna take our gate out. And there's our eight rotations. Isn't that adorable? I love it. I love the simplicity of it. And I love the fact that we can do a ton of things with it that will dress it up and make it look very complicated. And it isn't. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stitch one on every one of these lines that I did not use when I was stitching the eight point in. This is something that's important for you to see also. Remember we have this line coming through the bottom. So when we're lining our piece up, we want this line to be lined at the opposite side of where we're putting our top line. And by making sure those two lines, etched lines, line up on our project, it's going to be more balanced. Something else that I want to just kind of mention regarding those etched lines. They're etched on the wrong side of the template. So when we lay our template down right side up, we are seeing right exactly where those lines are. Most of us have our sewing machine lights on when we stitch. I don't have it on for filming purposes. If I were to switch this template right side down, and I had a light coming on it, shining on it from the side, this line is going to look like it's off center. So make sure that you're working with the etched line and not a shadow, because that is really pretty easy thing to do. Okay, so here we go. So this will be number nine. And we're going to go all the way to 16. Now what you can do also is you could do eight with the seven and a half inch template and do the other eight with a five and a half inch template or an eleven and a half inch template or any size you choose. Okay, there we go. And again, even though I'm going to adding a lot more, I'm still going to go on the line that's directly across from where I just stitched. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to stitch these in, and I will come back and show you the last one. Then we'll take our project out, and I'll show you how we'll bury the thread. Okay, so here we are with our 16 rotations. I'm going to move you back a little bit so you can see it better. I really like it. I think it looks adorable. There's so much we can do with it. Uh, you could come in, like I said, put a smaller one in. You could um, 
put some curly cues coming out of here, just kind of uh, willy-nilly. You could use your four inch arc and connect these. You could put circles around here. There's a whole lot of different design options and opportunities with these spin effects one. So one thing I do want to talk about before I sign off here is that th this is an area that is highly stitched. And a lot of people say, well, I get such a big thread build up there. What I tend to do to avoid that is I sometimes stop just one stitch short, turn my template, and then go ahead and get that needle back over where it belongs. And it, as you can see, it's not real heavy. Now, another thing you can do with this is take it to your ironing board, use steam, use a wooden clapper. That will help flatten this little area out as well. If, however, you're using a wool batting because you want a lot of loft to it, you may lose some of that loft in the center. Shouldn't be too much of an issue because it's so densely stitched there. So this is our Spin Effects 1, 16 rotations, 16 reference lines, and I did a 11 inch block and I use the seven and a half inch template. So I hope you try this out. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until we meet again, let's quilt.